Good evening. I'm Captain J-Rod's dad, Peter Rossi. And tonight we're gonna to be tying the bend back clouser. Now the clouser minnow is known worldwide as an excellent fly. And in fact, in former days, Lefty Cray stated that he had caught more species of fish on the clouser minnow than any other fly, including Lefty's deceiver. It is somewhat naturally weedless. But in our area of Pasco County, we have extensive three, four, and five foot grass flats. And we have a lot of rocky areas where the snook will hang out in the springtime. So the need for something a little bit more weedless was important to us. Hence, using the bend back hook to make a bend back clouser. The traditional clouser minnow was tied with bucktail. There are many new and interesting synthetics on the market that have gained use and favor. For this fly, in addition to the bend back hook, we will be using 140 denier chartreuse, tying thread of your choice. The underwing will be white polar fiber, which really vibrates quite well in the water and the overwing will be DNA holo flash. Because the overwing has natural flash of its own, we normally do not add any crystal flash in between the underwing and the overwing in this particular tie, period. Certainly, if you're using bucktail or something without associated flash, you would add several strands of crystal flash on either side before adding the overwing. In our case, the overwing will be chartreuse. If you look at the tan and white clousers in the water, they frequently will look like a shrimp. So while they're not the most ideal shrimp imitation, you may wish to consider using some tan for the overwing and put a few strands of crystal flesh in there. Remember that as far as the size of the dumbbell eyes go, it is a matter of personal preference. I tend to use medium weight dumbbell eyes for most of these flies. If we're fishing in particularly skinny water, you may wish to consider using the small dumbbell eye. And if you were in an area where you had a lot of ripping current, you may want to use a slightly larger hook and a large dumbbell eye. The hook in the vise is a TMCO 411S in size four. And the fly, the hook is upside down in the vise because we tie the dumbbell eyes on the bottom. So we will start making a small thread base. And to keep the thread base solid, we make a little bit of a thread base beyond the bend of the hook. We then position the eye at the bend using cross wraps as you would for a standard clouser. Now, sometimes we try to put some red flash in there for the gills, but in this case I've chosen a set of dumbbell eyes that are painted red, so we will not necessarily have to place any flash. We've done some baseline wraps, and this should lock this in. We will then start with a little bit of Zappa Gap to seal this. Now, the other difference between this fly and the standard clouser is that all of the fur is placed on top of the fly. Now again, everyone has their choice as to how to do this.
I've tried putting some underneath and it just seems to make a better looking fly if you put it all on top. So we will then start with some white polar flash. Try to measure it out. This is not a particularly big fly, so I think this should be fine. Use our scissors and we tease out some of the under fibers of the polar flash to make it a little bit smaller. Cut this at a slight angle. And then we will rotate the fly and bring it back to the upright position. Now, this fly tends to be a little on the bulky side take a couple of loose wraps first. And then as in the traditional clouds, we will go behind and tighten down these wraps. Come back over. And I think what I've made may have left a little bit too much out we will try to trim this off and clean it up a little bit so that the feathers do not come out. Okay. This is DNA Holofusion. It's not something that's that common these days, but it's a very flexible material. It's actually a little bit of an olive color. It's not com really completely chartreuse. And this makes a very good overwing, and to my eye anyway, seems to look more like the top of a greenback. You can see here we've cut, I'm sorry, we've cut these at an angle. Take one or two loose wraps and then bind these down. You can get quite all of them, but I think this will be fine. As you know, Bob Clouser himself always recommended that the fly be tied somewhat sparsely. This is a little small. Just take a half hitch here and then whip finish and we're done. Some people like to put a second whip finish for saltwater flies, and I think that's reasonable. Flip it. Now the Clousers traditionally had head cement, and then Bob Clouser improved them by the use of epoxy. We will finish the fly with a little bit of Solara's hard resin. Put some back here over the wraps. Smooth it out with the bodkin. Make sure all the area is covered. Probably need a dab more here. We 
we then hit it with the UV light. And we're done. And this is the final product. Thanks everyone for watching. Use your own creativity, experiment with different materials. Thanks again, have a good evening.